folks so welcome back to the channel and for this video I'm going to be talking about a modern Scottish classic uh, which is uh, one of the books that I remember having to look at when I was doing my undergrad a part of which was actually on Scottish literature and um, it was on the syllabus for when we were focusing on modern Scottish fiction and this was this is the first time that I've actually had the chance to reread this book in well, about 15 years, which is a very long time. Uh, but I will get on to talking about the book in just a moment. A wee bit of housekeeping first. If you enjoy my channel, if you enjoy my videos, if you can click on the subscribe button, if you can click on that notification bell, leave some likes, leave some comments, it's always really appreciated. And if you'd like to support the channel further, I will post a link to the channel's coffee.com page in the description bar below and in a pinned comment in the comments section. So with that out of the road, on to the actual main topic of this video. We're just going to be looking at The Trick is to Keep Breathing by Janice Galloway. And as I was saying, this is a, a modern Scottish classic. This is one of the books that we, had, we read when I was doing Scottish literature as part of my degree. And I always remember it was one of those books that at the time I did struggle to read and it was very much down to the style of the book itself. Uh, and it's not it's not one it's not a book that is told in a very traditional style that you'd expect from a novel. It's not told in a linear fashion. It's does it doesn't have one event leading on to another event, leading on to another event, and you see how like the characters would react to these events happening. It's actually it's very much told in a stream of consciousness narrative where with stream of consciousness it is very much told in a way where it's kind of jumping about a bit and uh, it's almost reminiscent of when somebody is talking and just things come into their heads and they've got these memories these thoughts kind of popping up and they automatically have to kind of talk about them bring them up, mention them. And that does kind of create a very much a sense of it, of the story being jumbled. You're never very really sure of when everything happens because it's not in that this, the, it's not in that things are not told in the sense of going from A to B. Essentially it's going from A to F, to B, to Z, to to M, it's jumps about quite a bit, and that the style of uh, stream of consciousness is also referred to uh, then a monologue. That essentially, it's just it's you're very much following the main characters' thoughts as they just pop up. The story itself tells the story of a young teacher called uh, Joy Stone and it follows her very much a a after she finds her, her life spiralling or started to really starting to go into a de downward spiral because as, as you do find that throughout the book her life, it's not been an easy life, it's not been one that has been filled with as much joy as her name might suggest. And she has lost a married lover, died in tra tragic circumstances, and you do find that out very much, very quickly throughout the book itself. And you, you are very much kind of drip fed information about what happened, but you never get a full explanation of why or how. You just get little kind of glimpses of what took place and you get little glimpses of what happened afterwards. And you, are, you do very much get the sense that what happened with Joy's married lover is essentially the straw that bro broke the camel's back and this is what has essentially set her off on this demo descent. And, it, and you do find this is all very much tied into her depression, her mental health, her uh, struggles with foods 
and her eating disorders and it was all very much get told in such a way that you almost, you almost feel her struggle with trying to cope with everything that's happened, everything that's taking place, with everything that's going on in their heads and it does very much just add to the story. And again, it will end with the whole style of the novel being an of consciousness. It does very much jump around from the past to the present and you do kind of get a sense that you, know, you can never quite tell if something you're being told is happening is, being, is actually something that happened in the past or if that's something that's happening in the present and it's almost as if Joy herself has become disconnected from reality and no longer is quite connected to the world around her and the home in which Joy lives very much symbolises and represents her mental state, her physical state and essentially the general decline in her life. The, 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 the home is barren, has very little furniture and very much is an unstable, empty shell of a home and which does kind of parallel Joy's life being empty and unstable itself. And, and it again, it is also very symbolic of a mental state as well. And I think one thing I also struggled with as well with the, the check is to keep breathing when I first read it is the fact that throughout the book a Galloway doesn't use uh, traditional quotation marks so there's no traditional kind of written indicator of when a character is speaking it's you very much have to kind of rely on other suggest suggestive factors other indicators and that does kind of for me anyway, it does create a, a slight kind of jarring sense of, of not, not being quite too sure of what you're reading or how, how, what, what is actually going on. But I do think that does add to the story itself. It does help you maybe understand at least a fraction of what is going on in Joy's head and what's going on in her life. That there is this just constant confusion and constant struggle to understand what's going on. And it is always told from a first person perspective. And also finds that you don't really get Joy's name told said very often. Yeah, I find that it's it is used more towards the end of the book than towards the start of the book. Um, after that, I'm not too sure what that could symbolise, but that was something that I did kind of get, get the impression was, was taking place, that you didn't really get her name used very much at all, if at all at the start, but was being used, okay, maybe not that much, but at least a bit more towards the end. And I have to admit, when I first realised that Joy's name was really kind of being used and was being mentioned within the text, it did make me stop for a moment as a reader. It did make me kind of stop as, as I was almost as if I was could take a moment to realise if, oh yeah, that's who they're talking about, that's who the book's about, it's about Joy. And, and I think kind of, that, that's kind of probably quite a kind of clever way of writing something, like uh, a trick is to keep breathing. Maybe not using the character's name very often, but when it does, when the name is used, it does make the reader go, oh, right, okay, oh, yeah, it make, makes them stop, makes them think, makes them just take a second to take into account what's going on. And with the ending, I don't really want to give too much of it away. I did find that it was quite a, a sudden ending. Uh, a bit like what you'd get with uh, the Scots Square 
by Lois Gasset Gibbon. It's a very sudden ending. Uh, you know, so it's very much suggests at what's going to happen next, but you're never told. And I did find that with the trick is to keep breathing. It is very much suggested that Joy is getting her life together, is getting back on her feet, getting a handle on things. But again, you're never really sure. You're never told at, by the, the by Galloway. You're never told at, by as a, as a reader what happens to her next. So she could get her life back together. She could get back on her feet, get herself sorted. Or she could just continue to spiral and fall off a cliff and have a tragic end. But you, you never see that. It's, you are kind of left with no resolution really uh, but I think with a book if it does an ending like that correctly it does make you sit and think about the book itself it does leave a book in your mind in your memory for a good long while after you finish reading and it just make, makes you want to continue thinking about that book and try to figure it out uh, go back and read it and yeah and enjoy it again and, and it does kind of leave you a sense of there being more to see, that there's more to happen, more to go on, but you're never going to get that sense of resolution. And even though there was that sense that she could, could possibly get herself back on her feet, that she could possibly get her life back together, there was still that sense of foreboding. And there's still that sense that even though there was a possibility of, of something good happening, there's also a very good possibility of the total opposite happening. But I would definitely recommend if you are looking for a more Scottish, more modern Scottish fiction, uh, more kind of modern Scottish classics, definitely get yourself a copy of The Trick is to Keep Breathing by Janice Galloway and just sit and enjoy it and take your time with it. So that's the book, my book review for this week. Hopefully there'll be some more to come. And I do hope that you've all enjoyed this video and you, you find the trick is to keep breathing intriguing. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye.